Minister, the committee has heard from dozens of digital creators and platforms who have said that their usually generated content will be captured by this bill. As Senator Simons told the CRTC Commissioner last week, there are all kinds of people who have legal advice that advises them to be seriously concerned that they will be captured by this section. The CRT Commissioner said, we are not interested in individual uploaded content. There is no purpose to regulating it. It would not be in the public interest. It would not contribute to the Canadian broadcasting system. Minister, in light of that, will you support an amendment to eliminate the bill's application to user-generated content? First of all, uh, Senator, thank you for the question. Uh, I would say that the bill is, is quite simple, right? It, it's about platforms. It's not about users. We saw that in 2.1. It's not about them. And we brought back 4.1. Remember, it was taken out. We brought it back. So you have to look at it in a way that uh, media, social media is out. You start from the principle that social media is out, and with a few exceptions for commercial content. We can't look at it the other way that... Social media is all in, and then we see who's, who's excluded. It's the opposite. They're all out, and only with the exception of commercial content with the criteria that, you know, would be caught by that. But that's, there's no obligation for the, 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 the creator. The obligation is only to the platform, not the creator. I didn't answer my question, so I'll go to another one. Uh, why do you believe, then, that it is in the greater public interest to elevate these limited exceptions making them what is most important to the government instead of giving ordinary Canadian creators the certainty they need, the certainty they require. Well, we're, we're there to support our creators. And, and as I said, uh, a digital or digital creators are absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, they're fascinating. Sometimes they do a lot of stuff with very little means. But again, it's not about them the same way. It's not about our traditional artists. It's not about Celine Dion. It's not about Drake at all. The only people that get obligations are the platforms. Obligations to invest in Canadian culture, obligation to showcase our Canadian culture, to give information. But the social media creators, I don't see which obligation they would have. Well, they seem to have a big issue. Would you put me on second, second round back here? Thank you, Senator uh, McDonald, Senator Wallen. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister, I think we'll try uh, one more time here. Twice the uh, commissioner of the CRTC has appeared before us, the last time with his legal counsel. Uh, both times they confirmed that user-generated content is under the authority of this bill, but uh, what they argued was it wouldn't be in anybody's interest to do it, so just trust us. We won't regulate uh, user-generated content. But, again, twice they confirmed they have actual regular, regulatory authority to do that. So to my colleague's point here, why don't you just propose, if you don't like any of the language that we might come up with, why don't you propose an amendment that would clarify that, period, full stop, once and for all, speak to the CRTC commissioner, make it clear, and perhaps l allow us to see the regulations that you want to put forward before all the votes are conducted on this bill. Well, thank, uh, you. thank you for the question, Senator. Um, as I said, we're open to, to discussions, but I, I want to be clear. 4.1 was excluded at the time, right? And we, under, we listened to, the, to our social, creators, social media creators. We listened to them. We understood their concerns. We brought it back. Right, with the exception of 4.2, which catches only commercial content with the three criteria. That's it. So, if I'm a creator, I have no responsibility because of the bill. Only the platform is. That's, but that's a huge difference. We really have to look at it, Senator, from the the the, the start point where social media is excluded, and only the commercial content will be. Recuperated, but that doesn't mean obligations for the creator. That means obligation for the platform. But dozens upon dozens upon dozens of content creators have looked at the three tests that would apply about whether they directly or indirectly generate revenue for themselves or somebody, and most of them do. That's why they are in the business of creating 
content. They make money. They're YouTubers. They're TikTokers. They generate money for somebody. Therefore, they are within the fence, the regulatory fence proposed here. To respect, Senator, they're not, because the three criteria have to be taken into consideration by the CRTC. Uh, in that case, they're not used to replace content that you would find in one of the streamers, in one of those platforms. For example, um, if, if I'm looking for Celine Dion, and I type Celine Dion, they will give me similar stuff to her, similar singer song, maybe women can hear it or not, this and that, but I will not get a TikToker doing other stuff. They're not in competition. No, no, People but that's the discoverability seem- issue. What I'm trying to get at here is they are user people who create content Mm -hmm. are ringed by this regulatory bill, but the the regulations included in this bill, we assume, because that's what the language says, because it generates revenue. So it's not about finding Celine Dion's music or music that's similar. But, but Senator, they have to, they have to take into consideration the three criteria. Only revenues is not enough. So, Criteria is the first, the revenue is the first of the criteria. And then the second revenue is, are you using this content on, for example, YouTube to replace what you could have heard exactly the same thing on Spotify? That's the second one. And the third one, if there's a, if there's a code or a code uh, unique for that song or, or content. But it has to be the three criteria considered. Senator Quinn. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Minister, for being here, and Mr. Rohn, thank you as well. I'm going to continue down that stream. I I had a different question, but this, I know, is a a very controversial piece of the legislation, and I think what we're boiling it down to is that Canadians need to have clarity in their legislation. And when we talked with the Commissioner last week, my question to him was, do you agree there should be clarity? And he said yes. Would you be opposed to amendments that bring that clarity? It's clear to you. You're the minister. It should be clear to you. But for Canadians, it may not be clear. Um, it may be clear to those in the bureaucracy. We bureaucrats, have, we understand our legislation. But for the average Canadian, in this particular legislation that touches all Canadians, they, as, as my colleague said, there's been numerous people and the emails, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of emails coming in claiming that they have a lack of clarity. Would you oppose amendments that, that bring clarity to the bill? Well, f- f- thank you for the question, Senator. First, the intent has always been clear. And the fact that we brought back 4.1 uh, also means that we did listen uh, to those concerns. Um, and we think, I- I'm ready to listen. Of course, I'm ready to listen. I said it from, from, from the start, and I had conversation with many, many of you, uh, some, and um, but the bill creates no obligations to either users or 2.1 or the social media creators. I understand that you've said that, and I understand that. My question is a yes or no. Would you support amendments that bring clarity to the bill? Well, if I don't see the amendment, I cannot say yes or no to the amendment, of course. Okay. But, the other, the but other I'm issue, open to discussions, as always. The other issue that people talked about was the power of the CRTC. And... Uh, in fact, the uh, commissioner noted last week that he wished that there was a clause that wasn't there. He, he would like to have an amendment to give him more power. Uh, he's the head of a regulatory agency. That's his job. Um, I guess my question is, would you be opposed to, a, uh, we see in other bills, methods that will bring balance, checks and balances. And I'm looking to see your reaction to the concept of having uh, regulations as they go through the Gazette 2 process. Also, that that. Upon that, they come back to the House and to the Senate committees to look at the regulations to see, are they consistent with what the then law would say and the policy direction? Would you be be opposed to such a check and balance? Uh, Are are you saying, uh, Senator, like every time there's one regulation, it comes back to the House and the Senate every time they make one? We're, We're talking not about licensing issues and things like that, but about the policy issues that we're debating here. Because um, it's it's really around those policy issues, and it's provide a check and balance. Because we've had many many witnesses talk about, we've had some that say CRTC is great, we've had some that say it's terrible, and we've had a lot in the middle of saying they're really cautious about the powers being bestowed and already existing within the CRTC. So it's a bit of a check and balance. Would you be opposed to a check and balance? Never, but 
but everything's going to be public and open to consultations. For example, when the government drafts the policy um, uh, direction, there will be a consultation right away. Then we'll adapt the policy direction based on that consultation. We send it to the CRTC. The CRTC makes the regulation. Boom, they go <laughs> on consultation on the regulations. And of course, I hope all of you will have the chance if you want to participate to that, then they adapt the regulation based on the, yeah. the consultation, and then they draft the final regulations and the implementation of yeah. And of I'm that. familiar with that. All I'm saying is that this is what I'm proposing exists in other regu in other uh, in other acts, firearms act, for example, and there's others. Um, well, I'm just looking. To, I'm sorry. just looking for checks and balances, and, and I understand your answer. I do understand your answer. Um, I just want to say that it's, if every time the CRTC makes a regulation, we come back to the then we cannot say, do anything. Say every time. You know, when it comes to the regulations around the policies, and, and we've been working in the absence of the policy directions, but you know, we eventually they need to become transparent through what the what the law becomes. So how you know Canadians are saying, how can we have a check and balance to give us confidence that that which the government has dictated? For example, the big guys in, the little guys out. You've said that. My colleagues exhaustively has said that they have concerns. They've gotten legal advice, many of them. And they could be subject to the act. And I know you're saying no, but there's others outside uh, that are saying you could be. And so it's that type of check and balance that I'm talking uh, about. What I'm saying is platforms and users out, but yeah. you, there will be consultation on the regulations, public. And